Okay, let's talk about the ND YAG laser today. So ND YAG stands for neodymium yttrium aluminium garnet G A R N E T neodymium yttrium aluminium garnet. So it's a type of laser which has a wavelength of one zero six four nanometers, and there are two primary ophthalmological uses. One is to treat the posterior capsular opacification, and secondly, it is uh, to use to reduce peripheral iridotomy. So let's focus on the PCO part today, because it is the most common late complication of a cataract surgery, more commonly seen after ECCE or phaco emulsification, and less commonly after SICS. So why does a PCO happen? It happens because there is a persistent lens epithelium. No matter how much a surgeon tries, some amount of epithelium is going to be left behind after cataract surgery. So this persistent lens epithelium gives rise to new cells, a specific type of cells called bladder cells. And there are two patterns in which a PCO forms. One is a Sommering's ring, the other is Elschnig's pearls. This is something that we, we must have discussed during the cataract surgery procedure. So the Sommering ring and Elschnig's pearls, two patterns, more commonly seen after a hydrogel lens, most commonly seen, then lesser with a PMMA, lesser with a silicon and least with an acrylic hydrophobic lens. A round edge produces more PCO than a square edge because you can imagine a round edge is not going to conform. It's not going to fit as snugly as a square edge will within the capsular band. What are the risk factors? Young age, because the mitotic activity of the cells is higher in a young, young individual. If there is inflammation or if there is pseudo exfoliation syndrome, irregular cap CCC, continuous curvilinear capsular excess, because the lens will not fit in properly again within the capsular bag, and a presence of silicon oil, because silicon induces some amount of inflammation, so that is going to be an indirect risk factors factor. What are the indications? First and foremost, most obvious is a decrease in visual acuity in a post-cataract surgery patient, but you have to make sure that the decrease in acuity is because of the PC autonomy itself. It could be due to any other reason, a cystoid macular edema, a decentered IOL, in that case, a PC autonomy will not help. So you have to first decide whether this diminution of vision is because of the PCO or something else. If it is because of PCO, go ahead with a PC autonomy with 100% confidence. The second indication is an inadequate fundus view. So this inadequate fundus view could be due for a diagnostic purpose. Say, for example, in case of a patient of diabetic retinopathy, you want to see the fundus. It was a case of mature cataract. You operated the cataract, but now the patient has a PCO. So what do you do? You do a PC autonomy because you want to see the fundus clearly or it could be a therapeutic indication. You want to give a laser to the retina. You want to perform a pan-retinal photocoagulation. You want to perform a delimiting laser. So in an inadequate fundus view, do a PC autonomy. Monocular diplopia. So there is th this is basically diplopia even after covering one eye. So when does this happen? This happens in a condition called capsular shrinkage. So what is a capsular shrinkage? When there is inadequate, uh, um, uneven proliferation of cells, it produces a, sh uh, a wrinkling of the capsular surface because of which the patient is going to have a, you know, a, a, um, a movement of the IOL and that is going to produce a monocular diplopia. The next indication is a capsular phimosis. Again, this resembles a shrinkage of the capsule. And the last indication is a capsular block syndrome. When do you not do PCOTomy? First and foremost, again, the most obvious reason, when you do not have a capsular view. You might estimate that there is a capsular uh, opacification, but the cornea is not clear, there is a hazy medium in the cornea. Two reasons why in case of hazy cornea you should not do a PCOTomy. First, you will not see the capsule properly. And secondly, even if you do the PCOTomy properly, the hazy cornea is going to persist and the patient is not going to have any vision. So any reason why you do not see the capsule very properly, do not do a PCOTomy. An uncooperative patient. Understand that these lasers are very fine, they are very uh, narrow beamed, but they are also very high energy particles. So when you have such a high energy, there is also a chance that you will damage the normal tissue, say the iris or the IOL. So in an uncooperative patient, do not do a PCOTomy. If there is any active inflammation, you do not do a PCOTomy for the simple reason that after a PCOTomy, you are actually going to add it to the inflammation of the eye. That's why you will have certain, you have to follow certain therapy protocols after you do the PCOTomy. Any active inflammation such as uveitis or if the patient has uh, recovered from a case, you know, any, any condition in which the eye is going to show inflammation, you have to wait for a certain period of time before performing a PCOTomy. 
uncontrolled glaucoma again because once you uh, you know give the laser there is going to be obliteration of the posterior capsule and the release of the capsular particles into the anterior chamber so when these particles are released into the anterior chamber they are going to go and block the trabecular meshwork for some time and going to raise the iop so if the patient already has an uncontrolled glaucoma you would want to defer the pcotomy and finally if there is any risk of retinal detachment or a cystoid macular edema the first two are absolute contraindications the next three are relative contraindications so you, these are to be decided on a case by case basis based on all factors so how do you do it you firstly anesthetize the patient by using topical anesthesia you use proparacaine eye drops always perform pcotomy on a slit lamp so a slit lamp is an instrument that helps stabilize the patient stabilize the surgeon and you want a stable patient so the slit lamp is the best instrument to use for a pcotomy you can or cannot use a plus focusing lens it really depends on the surgeon's preference certain surgeons prefer using certain do not but when you begin it is best not to use a lens because those there are that those many less moving parts while performing the procedure you focus just behind the pcil how do you know that there are indicator markers there is either uh, there's basically red color indicator markers that you can see in the nd yag machine either these will be just two or these will be four and the moment these appear the sharpest is the point where you just focus that is when the laser beam is focused on the pco on the posterior capsule you follow a spiral pattern instead of just randomly discreetly placing um, those laser beams for the simple reason that a spiral pattern helps in a controlled delivery of energy it prevents the vitreous prolapse into the anterior chamber because if you make it too large it will the vitreous will come in forward into the anterior chamber and how do you make sure that the vitreous does not come inside you keep the size of the pco pcotomy less than the size of the pcil that is the rule that you follow 3 to 4 mm of the diameter is sufficient so now the question arises what about the pco beyond 3 to 4 mm it is visually insignificant you are you are clearing up the visual axis which is the light which is falling onto the macula once that is cleared the vision is usually restored always make sure that you take vision immediately before and immediately after performing the pcotomy using a pin hole so that gives you the best uh, you know way of assessing whether your pcotomy has been sufficient or not so is the procedure done no after the pcotomy you have to perform certain therapeutic maneuvers the first is installing a topical steroid an antibiotic and a steroid combination to reduce the inflammation these cells are going to get released into the anterior chamber they're going to cause a rise in the uh, intraocular inflammation so you want to suppress that inflammation by using moxifloxacin and dexamethasone you want to use an nsaid again to reduce the inflammation nepafenac eye drop bd or tds in certain cases is sufficient and an anti glaucoma medication to reduce the iop spike by using timolol maliate bd what can go wrong as we discussed the iop can go up because these cells go and block the trabecular meshwork you can inadvertently cause a retinal detachment or cystoid macular edema either directly by focusing the laser beam onto the retina accidental retinal injuries are very much possible if you use a lot of energy uh, by the way the energy that is used is generally 2 to 2.4 millijoules or if this injury could be indirect because of a inflammation an inflammatory uh, you know reaction in the eye so these can cause a retinal detachment or a cystoid macular edema you can cause a high femur usually because there is indirect trauma to the iris instead of the pco you damage the iris iol pitting again this is an accidental injury when the laser beam is focused not on the pco but on the pc iol so that is why those focusing dots those two or four dots are important next you can cause a corneal edema in, again you focus the energy accidentally on the cornea or if you put a sustained amount of energy too many shots too much duration then even a normally focused beam can cause a corneal edema transient but something that needs to be kept in mind and finally the last complication is an inadequate procedure you perform the pcotomy you take the pinhole vision once you are done with the pcotomy and you realize that the vision has not improved that means you did not perform a pcotomy of the 3 to 4 mm diameter that was recommended you did it a smaller size so that comes with practice that comes with time so something that needs to be kept in mind and certain non ophthalmological uses that could be asked could not be asked but is interesting to know for an nd yag it is used in transurethral resection of prostate turp it is called used in laser hair removal and used in thermotherapy which is used in certain types of skin cancers so that's about ndac pcotomy
Thank you so much.